All right, hey guys, um, Andres and Samad here, back in Marketing in the Rocks, and we're actually doing it a little bit different. We're actually doing it at night this time, so it should be fun. How are yeah. you doing, Samad? <laughs> I'm doing well. How are you doing, Andres? Good, good. Still working on that, what was it called again? I keep thinking it's Johnny Walker because of the label, but... It really does kind of look like Johnny Walker. No, it's John Barr. It's probably a knockoff of a Johnny Walker. Kind of sucks, okay. actually, I think about it from that perspective. <laughs> but it's it's not been it's not been bad I'm, I'm due for a new one sorry guys i'm I'm almost like one of those like like don't waste a drop i'm gonna milk it until i'm done and Nothing enjoy something new <laughs> yeah i actually don't know what's in this decanter so we'll see <laughs> it, it's the mystery <laughs> yeah actually i want to see if you can figure it out by just tasting it though yeah we'll see <laughs> I know it's scotch. I know it's that much, but. I actually think that's um, the words. Yeah. It's either that or a red label. Gotcha. Yeah. Can you smell the barrel? No. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Nice. Cheers. So, what are we going to talk about today? <laughs> what are we going to talk? So this one's I, I'm going to kind of call this the predicting one, man. Uh, let's just predict. Let's crystal ball it. Uh, it is it's April. Shit. Um, yeah. So, you know, conferences are about to start. And, uh, yeah, this is kind of a play on, I, I think, the best marketers out there. And that's just a shout out for Apple just because, you know, they, they do the marketing well and they might make products that um, quite frankly are probably perfected because they wait on technology for a while. Uh, so I wanted to, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about WWDC that's coming out in it's uh, I believe it's June 7th to the 10th. So, you know, we'll just call this the funnel marketer. Andres and Samad predictions um, and just, yeah, speed, like, let's just, uh, let's run with it. Let's see what comes out of it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I know one thing that you and I have talked about a lot is how Apple's really strength is making things simple. Mm -hmm. It's all about making it as user friendly as possible. You know, and I think that's one of the biggest reasons why their watch was so popular because it was just very easy to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even their phones. Yeah, I mean, iOS is just simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think that, I think that's part of it. And I think if you're trying to play and it's always fun to do it, but if you're just playing <laughs> like, you know, uh, guessing like their, their scheme, right? Like their, their evil plans, the muhahaha stuff, right? Like, um, especially because they, they've heard us as marketers, what do they really have up their sleeve, right? Um, and I think that there's, it's funny because, you know, it, every, everything is an opportunity. And, and if we don't pivot quick as marketers, we're, we're going we're gonna to die. Um, we've all seen, you know, we've all run through it a couple of times. So, you know, the whole doom and gloom scenario of like, all right, Facebook is, down because apple's making them down so now we're gonna go you know burn our iphone and shit like that like stuff like that <laughs> uh, we're gonna have to put a little explicit content on this one but like you know like it, it really is gonna be how do we take that and um you know uh, grow with it pivot with it benefit as as a whole like as our industry and and then and really as, as mainstream, you know, uh, utilizers or users or just the whole community in general, right? Like everyone that's an Apple user. Um, and I think if you look at it from that perspective, hear me out. This is going to be kind of a, a, a crazy one, but I'll share my screen. Um, and anyone yeah. here that has, let me just get it ready. Hold on. All right. So, so yeah, like I, I think what, you know, what, what's going to come down the future is 
is actually very close. It's it's kind of crazy. So I don't know if anyone here has seen the movie Minority Report. So like these are ads, personal advertising in the future, right? And it's Lexus. They use Lexus in the movie. <laughs> and like, so, you know, Tom Cruise is like walking down. I think he's actually in DC uh, and just walking down like the metro station and see that like little beacon there that just like popped in and started reading his subliminal thoughts. And now he's like seeing ads for like beer and he just got hit again. Like he just got scanned again. And, you know, he's like seeing like, you know, travel, like all this stuff, right? Like he's just walking into different places and get, you know, keeps getting checked. So I'm not saying we're getting to that level. Now he's like gap. That's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> I don't think placement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I don't think we're there yet, but consider this, right? Like, all right. So if Apple is taking down Facebook plus Google, and we talked about the whole, you know, Apple doing the whole push notification on uh, cookies piece already. Um, and we talked about like how I, I think at least, and some other people that are predictors on Apple and I'm definitely not a predictor on Apple. I just think it's cool. But um, specifically I've talked about like, you know, how Apple could buy DuckDuckGo and almost replace Google as their search engine. Mm -hmm. That's all great. But how do they benefit? Right? Like they got to replace it with something. Um, and they were just like the biggest cash hoarders out there. So for it to benefit us as marketers, I think it's going to mean even more niche targeted, hyper local marketing coming our way soon. Uh, and with WWDC, there's two pieces that kind of make sense, right? Like um, that actually have been around for a while, but you know, it's just maybe it's fallen off the radar, but probably again, you know, these businesses are, are, you know, thinkers or they're strategic behind it. They allow like, especially Apple will allow all the bugs to be worked out, but why should they foot the bill for all that? You know, like their bad name then would come out like, no, they, they're going to put it out a long time ago and then like let other people try to perfect it and then come in and it's still their technology. So they can still um, kind of claim it at the end. Right. So there's two pieces that I think are going to play here. One is from a hardware perspective, which Apple mostly will announce that kind of stuff in September, right? Like, you know, the iPhones usually come out in September. Mm -hmm. From a hardware perspective, Google tried and failed, but this is also, again, what Google and like Samsung have had issues with, probably with Apple. And right? I think Android users always talk smack about Apple users is um, Google tried the Google Glasses and, you know, it just came off creepy, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I Apple perfected the watch like we talked about right like you said there earlier so what if they came out with perfecting the Apple glasses in September so how do you preempt that with the developer conference in June mm -hmm. um, so the, the only way that I can think that it makes sense is like the two pieces that I think they've already set up um, that again just no one talks about right one is Apple came out with a credit card and I mean, you don't know anyone that really has it, right? Like they, they, I think they were trying to make them out of titanium or something like that too. Yeah. And, it was something wild. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, no one's using them. I mean, you know, a status symbol stole the black card and stuff of that nature. Right. Like, so no one cares about that, but they have used that titanium card to still ingrain us as people, as like, you know, just users every day uh, to use their Apple Pay system, right? Like definitely during the pandemic, Apple Pay has become even bigger because mm -hmm. no one wants to touch things. Um, so my first prediction, number one, is the wallet developer guide, right? Like they came out with this open sourced, all of this data and this whole framework and I think they came out with that, oh man, I'm not even sure. Maybe back in like 2016. 
but just on the front end, you know, everyone's seen this, right? Like, you know, the push notification, especially when you're at the mm-hmm. airport. Yeah. Or even at Starbucks and like, you know, your gym passes. And then you got your store cards and your discount cards and loyalty cards, which is still like not there. I think Starbucks is probably the bond that uses the most, in my opinion. <laughs> I don't know if you do that, but I definitely do. Um, showing the balance and I can see my, my Starbucks store card. Tickets, mm-hmm. definitely. I'm starting to see yeah. that more used, kind of quieted down now, obviously, since the pandemic. Uh, but like coupons for like local stores and offers and like, you know, again, the boarding passes is probably the most uh, common. Yeah, that's the only one. Well, that and the actual like cash up is what I always use. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, like they're showing like the MasterCard that they came out with with the, man, I think it was Barclays. They came in out with Barclays. Yeah. Um, and again, I think that was a gimmick, but they did it just to kind of make it more mainstream and then they went quiet so from a software perspective i think there's going to be more growth here for marketers on the apple wallet um because you know we obviously need to there's two parts of it is marketing and sales and we obviously need to make sure the dollars come in so um if we're going to get people local hyper local we got to make sure that they're transacting as well so you know, let's just say again, September, they released the Apple glasses. Uh, almost to the point where you don't even have to pull your phone out anymore, right? Because they make it cool and nifty in a way where it's just easy to use. And it's a wearable that makes sense. It ties in with your watch. And quite frankly, you almost get it to the point where you don't even have to take your phone out. It could be like your mainframe in a way, like your phone is your mainframe. And, you know, when you want to do some real work, you can pull it out. Um, Plus, I don't think you can really have a camera in your watch, your you know, in your glasses and stuff like that. So I think it'll be still more of a photographer tool. Uh, but for transacting without even taking your phone out, like this is perfect, right? They've already set it up. So if June is when the WWDC happens, I think there's going to be a lot of noise coming out on Apple Wallet. What are your thoughts? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. And I think just because of the year that Apple Wallet has had because of COVID, it's just perfect timing for it. And I feel like if there's one thing that Apple is good at, you know, they take their time with things, but mm-hmm. if they need to crank something out, they can do it. Because like you said, they're just sitting on money. So. Yep. And, and they, they're sitting on the stuff that they put out a while back too, but why they haven't really closed the loop on it. Mm-hmm. So. And they always do. If you look back with Apple, they always close the loop, they which do. I think is really cool to watch yeah yeah so wwdc first prediction is is this it's it's definitely i think from a software perspective this is probably going to be a big one right so like they're going to basically probably say boohoo they're they're putting out push notifications to stop cookies and they're going to play it on this whole privacy method which Mm -hmm. makes sense um and and all of us marketers are going to be here saying no we hate you now um but if you really get out of this like resentment mode and grow you're going to see that there's probably a huge opportunity um now again this is this is huge for like developers and like stores and all that from a you know a tech perspective but what really probably excites us as marketers or should is another device another you know piece that apple came out actually back in 2013 um and i think it's, again it's just another sleeper but it's not really as mainstream or it's not cool and trendy as uh you know what a watch would be or glasses would be or obviously what a phone is um so it's called the eye beacon do you remember that one no i actually don't i actually don't think i've ever heard of this one so Again, it was like a com- competition. Um, Apple iBeacon versus Google. Google had something called Eddie Stone. And actually, it's funny as it is, I was just like doing a little bit of research on it. And I just typed in, is, um, is iBeacon dead? Right? And, you know, it's Google, right? Obviously, they're going to pull their own SEO, but it's funny because actually it's hurting them 
<laughs> from an SEO perspective, because when I type in iBeacon dead, literally the first result, which is actually just a, a snippet, you know how Google does the snippets, is Google, <laughs> Google killed Eddie Stone. So <laughs> Google's working against themselves on this one, guys. <laughs> uh, Google kills Eddie Stone. <laughs> the internet, why Android nearby iBeacons and Eastone failed to gain, you know, five reasons why beacons are dead, long live beacons. Like, you know, there's obviously articles about this. Um, NFC is kind of a more trendier or more known term, I would say. But NFC is actually the same thing as an iBeacon. It's just, um, you know, if you know what NFC is, like, you know, like when, you know, when you touch your phone on something and it pulls up your Apple Pay. Yeah. Um, or even a card. That's more on a method of payment. Um, so I don't want to really say that we're tying an iBeacon to NFC completely. Uh, but this kind of all goes to the whole conversation of like internet of things and all that kind of stuff, right? Which we, we talked about a little bit because we talked about like NFTs and all this other stuff in a couple other Marketing Rocks episodes. And um, I, I think the internet of things and, and the physical web you know, like this is wrong, it's not dead. Um, and actually, if I click on that article, it's obviously clickbait, but it's probably gonna say that it's not dead. Um, mainly for the fact that when they came out with Apple, Apple came out with iBeacon and they created the whole framework and then, you know, basically gave it to developers to go play with and build stuff off of. Um, they didn't actually go mm -hmm. in and design their perfect, you know, um, beacon. They actually allowed other um, companies to go create their own. And and this this company here is, I think, played around with this fairly well. It's called Gimbal. Uh, not a mainstream brand or anything like that, but consider this, right? Like, so every store would have these little eye beacons that are kind of like pucks. If you remember in that minority report, they're like these little things that, you know, will scan you. Um, they're not going to scan your eyes or your retinas, which is what minority report did to that extreme. Uh, but what they'll do is they'll, um, they'll be able to create audiences on ads, which already exists. So again, that's why I'm saying, I think this is, this makes sense. Um, you know, you can create and target audiences based on first party location data, such as demographics, psychology or psychographics and more. So it takes that minority report piece and actually makes it real. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is a good visual here. I think, um, you know, like we're close to this, you know, development in, in the the rock lower, like the Bethesda area um, called Pike and Rose. So like consider of like, you're walking down uh, any, you know, um, new development that's out there that has a whole bunch of like mixed use and stores and coffee shops and everything else with it, right? Like you can walk into one store and see a different push notification to say, hey, try this out and get 10% off. So it takes that loyalty piece that we saw here, create this coupon, or even the store card, more of the coupon piece probably, and really hyper-localizes it. Um, which is kind of, I mean, it's just a perfect setup that they already got. And then the other piece that they got is because it runs off of like low energy, the way iBeacons work, I think if you, um, you actually just look up a definition of it it's running off of um like low energy bluetooth basically so it's not taking up too much power um which is that's really the beauty of it because first of all it'll last without a power source which is huge you don't have to put a battery on it i mean you don't have to plug it into anywhere you can put a, a puck with a battery and it'll run all day and like maybe swap it out the batteries the next day so that's, that's a good thing about it. That's one. But the, no, the second one for marketers, I think, is that you can get it so hyper-targeted. So like, you know, Andres is shopping for a suit here. Um, turns around, you know, looks at, you know, a rack of different suits. 
but turns around and was like, yeah, I wonder what shirt will go well with it. That uh, becomes available, like a, a promo or an offer would turn available saying, hey, look, like you saw that blue suit. Yeah, check out this shirt and get 10% off just by turning around. That's wild. So would the beacons be on the racks, on the wall, or? They could be, yeah, they could be either, anywhere, really. Um, they can be, because they're battery operated, they can be on the wall, they can be inside the rack. Um, they can be on the ceiling. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I think those are probably the three main spots that I would say that they would be at, you know, like, um, but they would be in, in places that you probably won't even notice them. You're not really meant to, I think again, minority report makes it a little bit more, uh, mm -hmm. visual, but you're not almost meant to go see the beacon. They're just there. Uh, but it'll, it'll send you a notification. And again, they'll probably start on the phone, but if Apple comes out with glasses and you see a notification, like it's I think on your glasses. Be, right. And I mean, just thinking about like going shopping or whatever, it would be a whole different experience now mm -hmm. because retail is kind of dying, but I think that would really bring retail back to be able to do that with, with the glasses. Yeah. I mean, I would want to try that. <laughs> Seriously. Right. And um, I mean, it's, it's actually, again, a perfect storm because if Apple Wallet's connected and you go into a store, you find what you like, you turn around, you find something else that matches that perfectly and it's already set up from a marketing perspective. Mm -hmm. um, let's just think about it this way, right? Like you don't even need to go to the cashier anymore. You don't have to go to the cash register. Just walk out with it. I mean, Amazon's already perfected or started to perfect that in Seattle. I don't know if you've heard about this one or not. Yeah. Yeah. So the tech, the technology is already there. Um, Apple already has all, all of us have tied our bank accounts and credit cards to our Apple mm -hmm. wallet. So you walk in, you'll, you just choose what card you want to use and you're done. Right. I mean, and maybe there's a person that comes up to you that packages it, but as funny as it is, Apple's actually already started working on that piece too. They said that they're not going to even package new phones in the same amount of boxes and stuff like that because they're trying to be green. Mm -hmm. So, hell, like, do I even need that package, that plastic bag? Probably not. You don't either. It's <laughs> just hurting the yeah. environment. Um, this is, they're, they're going to look like the freaking savior. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cause that's all we care about. I mean, it, they'll actually reinvent how we even look at branding in a way. Cause it won't matter about what kind of shiny box I think it will come in. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's all so, about, you know, the actual product. It's the product which and is, the experience. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, I think, you know, branding has become for us marketers so much more about the experience than any type of packaging, any type of, logo or anything like that right yeah and yeah they'll get they'll get it right um so like that's that's kind of the concept guys it's kind of cool but it actually all ties in fairly well if that's the physical device that comes out probably on pre-order because covid has definitely hurt us in terms of our supply chain mm -hmm. so they'll probably come out with a phone they obviously do they always will, <laughs> uh, but they'll come out with that in September. They'll come out with like a pre-order for the glasses. It'll be a novelty thing that, you know, like that looks more exclusive first because it's so hard to get because it'll be so limited quantity. Um, but in June though, I think it's going to be this, it's going to be all about the Apple developer, you know, um, improvements on the wallet. And then they'll bring up the iBeacon for sure, but then they'll definitely talk about ads because it just makes sense. Um, and then, you know, like this is, this is this right here, right? Like beacon-based retargeting. So mm -hmm. deploy a network of your own beacons to create custom audiences and retarget them in the future. So what do you got to do? You got to take out Facebook <laughs> to retarget with your own stuff. And Apple's already setting that up 
fairly yeah. well by taking out Facebook. Yeah. And that's one thing I've always admired about Apple. They're always on the long game. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I mean, again, check off a couple of things, right? Like it means better for the environment. It actually probably means less social media guys, right? Mm -hmm. Like live your life and still get retargeted, but you're getting retargeted from your phone instead of logging into Facebook or Instagram or something like that, right. where you have to go into and see it. So, I mean, it, it's going to suck from the, um, the marketer perspective on like where you're buying ads. But I think I would predict, I mean, I'm going to put that seed in now um, that maybe in a year or two, there'll be a, just like there's an iTunes and a, you know, like just like how it disrupted the music industry they're going to disrupt the market, the ad industry very much where you're going to be buying ads on Apple, Apple's mm -hmm. ad store. Um, and it won't even show up on Facebook or IG. So like those are going to be your second tier sooner or later because everyone will look at their phone or they'll look at their devices and they'll see an ad. They don't even need to go on social media. So like now go live your life, right? Like there's so many like suicides and, like depression and all that's going up on the rise. This solves that too. Mm -hmm. And like you said, with them looking into buying, um, what was that company? Duck, duck, duck. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, they have that and they come up with ads on that. And that's just the main browser, in every, the, mer the main search engine in every iPhone you know, they can just create ads for that and they pretty much just took over the whole ad industry. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they'll clean up, guys, right? The Apple. <laughs> yeah. Apple. Uh, so let's just rate this, Andres. What do you think, man? Is this, uh, can you see that happening? Like if you were to put, from one to 10, how high, how likely is that something that Apple would touch? I would say like, seven and a half yeah. because they're definitely like all the pieces are there if yep. you really step back and see what they've been doing the past you know year or so and the fact that covid has helped apple pay so much mm -hmm. it just kind of makes sense that they would take the next step for ads take facebook out um and then they've yeah. been sitting on they've probably been sitting on the you know glasses technology for a little while now so yeah, they keep perfecting that Gorilla Glass stuff, right? They mm -hmm. they put they bought out I think Corning, uh, like a while back, like, mm -hmm. and, and definitely with the newer phones, like the glasses, you know, the glass on it is definitely like way more resistant to cracking than it was before. Mm -hmm. I can tell you from a five year old dropping mine. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah. I mean that also is just a selling point for anybody. Honestly, if they just came out with blue light glasses, like what we're wearing right now, yep. I bet you so many people would buy it just because they're after blue light glasses. Mm -hmm. So they have that goal for them. Yep. So yeah. you add all the tech in there. <laughs> we're going to be like decked out. We're going to have our AirPods in. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to hear glasses to see we won't have our phone out anymore it'll be in our pocket so we'll be actually living our life a little bit better and if something crazy comes up you can see it in your apple watch so yeah and then again you you got to go heads down it might mean less pull out your laptop but you right. actually like go pull up your phone which are mm -hmm. bigger screens anyway so it's funny as it is trend wise i think it's still going to mean bigger screen they're not going to go smaller on screens on phones yeah well, and it's funny because that's a trend that has been coming back, you know, a lot lately. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a whole setup of a bigger screen and, you know, a keyboard and stuff, just if, if I had a PC and it's connected to my laptop, yep. I do work on both. But, you know, eventually I needed the bigger screen and right. the double screen and all that. And I think anybody now, the most people working from home, it's needed. Yeah. But if they're going to, can you, can you see Johnny Ive in his British accent, just say, 
imagine a world where you don't have to be at home anymore. Mm-hmm. You're just walking around, no, no talking to people in terms of going to cashier, no pulling up social media to do, mm-hmm. uh, to take a picture of what you just did, just doing, living your life. Like, I mean, man, I'm like in my head right now, I got a British accent going on, but. But here's uh, my question then. Yeah. So where does that put Amazon with this whole thing? Because you know, they're not going to take that. And online buying has been made. It was basically made by Amazon. Like they were the ones, like everybody else gets online business because of Amazon, because they made it so big. And that's yeah. where all the cookies and the retargeting and social media came in. So if people are still buying online, you know, is that still going to help yeah. with the retargeting? Or are people just going to go back to the old school actual going into stores, which I can see because we've been deprived of that for so long now. Yeah. I, I would say that Apple and Amazon are less competitive with each other than Apple and Google are. Right. For sure. Mm-hmm. Cause Amazon doesn't have devices like phones and stuff like that. They have obviously the kit, the, the Alexa set up and mm-hmm. Apple, Apple just discontinued the home pod. They only have the home pod mini because they were way too late to the game on that. Yeah. Which I thought was like maybe a failure on them, but again, kind of just putting it into context with our whole conversation now maybe they specifically were like yeah you know what we don't need the yeah we don't need that home device yeah they don't care they already have the whole other ecosystem yeah (laughs) so consider if they i don't think they want to take on two markets i think they're actually going to hurt us as marketers first Mm-hmm. Just like they did with the music industry. They're going to take down Facebook. They're going to take down IG. They're going to take down Google. Um, because that's where all these companies are making their money. It's all in ad revenue. So just like in the music industry, they're going to touch that first. Mm-hmm. I, don't think, I don't think they want to go into the e-com business, though. Okay. And this like, is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just think they're too much of a control freak, right, man? Like, I mean, they don't want to brand um an apple store for all e-com in a way because mm-hmm. they yeah they just want their own products out there so yeah. they're not gonna even put their name behind it so then this is just you know a crazy thought do you think apple's eventually gonna have their own social media as well uh, like for yes. apple users something like that i I'm wondering if they're looking at the data, which they obviously are. They probably have enough data scientists out there saying that social media is actually on a decline, mm-hmm. right? There's so much bad data about social media. It, it really is wasting our time, unfortunately. And I hate to say it as a marketer, but is it the only way for us to grow businesses? Not really. It's just become mm-hmm. the only way. So... I don't think so. I don't think they're going to do that. Like I, I think they're going to, when they want to take care of businesses or companies, they're, they're going to keep Facebook and Google for that purpose or, you know, Twitter and all that. Right. Like, uh, I don't think, again, they want to touch that. So I think, I don't think they're going to announce something of that nature unless something changes like in our, you know, behavior as, um, as a species or as a society that actually makes social media better for us. And, you know, again, it goes into the whole user addiction element. And I don't think, I don't think they're going to go, they don't want to associate themselves with that. Right. And I think the main reason why they wouldn't do it is just because they hate legal issues, you know? That's true. Sure yeah. 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 yeah th- that, that keeps them squarely in it. And you know, they're, they're out of antitrust completely. Mm-hmm. So yeah, going back to Amazon, I think that they're just like, um, just like on uh, how uh, specifically on Apple TVs, um, I don't know if you have one or not, but like Apple TV never worked really well with like Netflix per se, as an Mm -hmm. example, right? And I think it's because, you know, you can buy all the same movies or shows on apple tv and they came out with apple tv plus mm. um which is actually kind of cool from the perspective of it actually like 
takes all of your different content places, right? Netflix and Prime and Hulu and, and actually even YouTube, um, if you're using like YouTube TV or something like that, um, and puts them all into one easy to use interface, which is kind of cool. I, we have it at our house. Um, and for a very long time, they didn't use Netflix. They didn't, Netflix wouldn't be able to search. So when you would use search on your iPhone, or um, I'm sorry, your Apple TV remote for Siri, like using your voice, it wouldn't pull up any Netflix um, shows or content in general. So you would actually have to open up the Netflix app to get to it, uh, to search, you know, like in the search features on, on Netflix. Mm -hmm. uh, but everything else is connected. So like, for example, I think since Apple and Amazon were not really fighting each other on, on the TV side of things, they actually completely opened it up for um, listening purposes. So like on your Alexa, you can connect to Apple Music, no problem. Um, because no one uses Amazon Music, even though that is a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they've opened up Amazon or Prime to all the shows being on Apple TV Plus. So you can easily syndicate and just like find what you want to watch. And it'll open up Prime automatically once you find it. So it's a great like search engine, if you will, right? Uh, for your content. And again, Netflix is the only one that they didn't really like completely do well with. And I just recently noticed that they started doing Netflix now too. So they're not seeing Netflix as a competitor either. Um, but that shows that I think that there's like a symbiotic relationship, if you will, between Apple and Amazon. They're they're two different beasts and yeah, they both have some hardware, but give Amazon their cookie. Apple actually bowed out of the Alexa name and that's, that's Amazon's like bread and butter now. Mm -hmm. It's like all the fire sticks and the Alexas and you know, the echo yeah. devices. So they actually set it up where they complement each other perfectly in a way, at least how, how I see it. So yeah, I mean, it does kind of make sense. And, mm -hmm. you know, if they really wanted to, like, if they work together, they could take anybody else out. Yeah. If they really wanted to. Yeah. Yeah, so that is uh, hopefully the future. I th I'm kind of excited about it. I think it opens up, like, man, like, as us as marketers, like, we can go to every local business um and start creating offers again right like not ads to go to offers so like as funnel marketing it's all about offers and this is perfect mm -hmm. right it's not about the ad in, in general the ad is just a means to an end so, so yeah start connecting different shirts to that you know come up with a nice little graphic that goes along with it we're all going to mm -hmm. kind of way have higher demand from that perspective, instead of just trying to create Facebook ads all the time or Google ads. Mm -hmm. And I think as marketers, that's what's fun for us. You know, the opportunity of doing something like that, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I think the offer is definitely more fun than the ad, <laughs> you know, yeah. because most of the time the offer is solving a problem. The ad right. is selling and I think most marketers don't like selling as crazy as it is. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's, it's always the marketing versus uh, sales uh, mm -hmm. conversation. And this, yeah, this brings that up whole conversation again. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, predictions from Samad, at least on WWDC and what probably will come in September. And, uh, Anyone that's out there that says, man, we told you you're not right, that's fine. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm okay with that. But uh, <laughs> I think it's, uh, I think there's a possibility at least. I'm not, I'm not a, a 10 out of 10 sold on it, but kind of like the writing is on the wall in a way. It makes sense. It definitely makes sense. Yeah. And if you guys have any um, predictions as well, feel free to drop them in the comments. We'll make sure to answer. Yeah. Um, doesn't matter how crazy they are. No. So we'd love to hear from you guys. <laughs> For sure. 
All right. Well, that's another good marking on the rocks and the books. Yeah. Cheers to that. Cheers. Cheers.